Welcome. In this section about pranayama, we're going to look at some yogic breathing techniques. So pranayama is made up of two Sanskrit words, Sanskrit words, prana and yama. Prana means life force. Yama means control. So there we have controlling or working with the uh, breathing process or the life force process in a better, b beneficial way. Um, I've tried a lot of things over the years. I'm kind of a proof is in the pudding kind of guy. <laughs> and what I like about these prana pranayama exercises and why I keep doing them is because they actually do something. Um, I find it fascinating that the yogis figured this out however many hundreds of years ago, maybe before um, we had the science to explain some of why it's effective. But, you know, the breath is a direct link to the nervous system. How cool is that? It's direct link to the nervous system. It's free. We can do it almost anytime, anywhere. So we can do these exercises. They're great to do as we're going into meditation. They help us calm down and center ourselves. And they make it easier, I find, to get into the meditative state because they start to balance and calm down my mind. Instead of just going from busyness to all of a sudden sitting down and trying to be silent, that can be sort of an abrupt uh, transition. So I find that doing a little bit of physical movement to relax the body and then doing the pranayama helps to uh, make it easier for me to transition to that meditative state in a, a smoother way. Um, and in terms of the nervous system, so uh, the breath uh, being able to affect the nervous system, this can balance the many different ways it works. It can balance the right and left hemispheres of the brain. First thing we're going to look at is a slow, deep breath, and that helps to bring us from a parasympathetic uh, I'm sorry, a sympathetic or fight or flight response into a parasympathetic or relaxation response. And also, of course, we're oxygenating the body more and more efficiently when we have a deep breath. When we exhale, we're helping uh, to release what we don't need. So uh, the breath works on many different levels. It works on the energetic, the, the prana level. It works on the nervous system level. If we're breathing more efficiently, then we're oxygenating our blood, which helps everything. So there's just a lot of benefits from doing these exercises, and they're great before meditation, but you can also do them just during your day. If you just have a few minutes, it can really help to calm, to de-stress, to center, to balance, to focus. So it doesn't have to just be done through meditation. If you're sitting in traffic, that's a great time to breathe. If you're waiting for something in a meeting, or even if you're in a meeting and listening intently, you can take some deeper breaths and it'll help you maybe even take in that information or maybe listen better because it'll, it'll help to relax you. So that's the other thing I like about these techniques. Not all of them you can do when you're driving, okay? Please pay attention when you're driving. <laughs> you can certainly breathe deeply. But some of these other ones, you can squeeze in a little bit here, a little bit there uh, during your day, the beginning of the day, middle of the day, end of the day, whenever you want to. So it doesn't just have to be before you meditate. So first one we're going to look at is simply how to take a deep breath. Most people uh, in society are not taught to breathe deeply unless maybe you're an opera singer or a musician that has to use their breath for their instrument or someone studying yoga. So uh, one thing that's very helpful for taking a deep breath is also exhaling fully and pushing all the air out. And that makes it easier to take a full inhalation. We also might want to move around a little bit before we uh, take a deep breath because the, uh, the muscles in the upper torso and the ribs need to be able to expand. If we're contracted and tight, we, we can't take a, a full breath. You know, the rib cage... And the lungs actually expand in a lot of different directions, not just up, but front and back and sides. A rib cage really has a lot of movement. So if we uh, move around a little bit before we breathe, stretch a little bit, that can help with taking a full breath. So to take a full deeper breath, and we're going to uh, practice with the abdominal breath as well. Uh, let's start by taking a gentle breath. 
And then pushing all the air out of your lungs and your abdomen. Push as much air out as you can. You can push it out through your mouth. And let your abdomen contract. Push all that air out. And then when you're ready to inhale, if you push all that air out, the abdomen naturally expands and then you can move that up into the lungs and then we reverse that when we exhale slowly pushing all the air out of the lungs then the abdomen pushing as much air out as you can so the abdomen's actually coming in push 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 and then when you're ready to inhale see if you can let that abdomen expand and you can have your your hands on your abdomen and push against them if that helps to bring the awareness down into your abdomen and what's happening physiologically and physically with this <clears throat> when we take a, a breath that expands our abdomen our diaphragm can lower and so our lower lungs can fill with more air why is that a good thing because of gravity if we're standing or sitting most of the blood in our lungs is in the, the lower lungs not the upper lungs and what does breathing do largely it oxygenates the blood so it literally helps us to oxygenate more effectively. So when we expand our abdomen, when we inhale, the diaphragm can lower, which means the, the uh, lower lungs can fill with more air as well as the upper lungs. So it's a very effective uh, and worthwhile practice. So to take that deep breath, the full exhalation makes it easier to take a full inhalation. So inhaling, Pushing all the air out from the lungs and then the abdomen, push all the air out. And then when you can't push any more out, start inhaling by expanding the abdomen, pushing against your hands if you need to. Then moving it up to the lungs. So just doing that four or five times is a wonderful practice. So you probably wouldn't do that during entire meditation practice, but four or five times and then moving into relaxed breath or four or five times uh, during the day when you need to. So that's a deep breath. The next one we're going to look at is um, Nadi Shodhana or alternate nostril breathing. So uh, Nadi means channel energy channel. Uh, shodhana means clearing or purifying. So this pranayama breathing technique is to purify the energy channels, alternate nostril breathing. Um, I find this to be very balancing. What I like about it is it's calming, but it doesn't make me sleepy. This is another good one to do in the middle of the day if you want to get calmed and focused. Seems like it helps to balance the right and left hemispheres of the brain too, also oxygenates us deeply. Um, in the official yoga tradition, we're using our thumb and our uh, ring finger, but it's hard for me to, everyone's built differently, it's hard for me to separate that ring finger and get it up from my other fingers. And I'm not really worried too much about which finger you use, but what we're going to be doing is blocking one nostril at a time, so we're only breathing through one nostril at a time. But it's, it's not... This exercise is not to be done unless you're clear in both nostrils. If one side is blocked, then you're not going to get enough oxygen. So please don't do it unless you can breathe easily through both nostrils. And a couple contraindications, reasons not to do this. If you're fighting a cold, fever, flu, sinus infection, uh, because you might be breathing some of the germs further into your sinuses. So... Please don't do this if you've got fever, flu, cold, sinus infection, or blocked sinuses. Also doesn't work well on a full stomach, not comfortable, so not right after eating. Or if you're a woman, not during uh, menstruation. So very simply, we're going to breathe in through the left nostril, out through the right, in through the right, out through the left. That's one round. Doing it four or five times, as I think you will see has a wonderful effect for calming and balancing. So in order to do this, I'm gonna block my right nostril with my thumb. I'm gonna inhale through my left nostril. I'm gonna close my left nostril, exhale right. I'm gonna keep my finger there on my left nostril so I can inhale right. 
close right, exhale left. So I'm doing this slowly but comfortably slowly. You don't want to feel like you're going to pass out. And then inhale again through the left. Close the left nostril, exhale right. Keep your finger there so you can inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Pushing all the air out. You may find as you're doing this, you can go a little slower each time. Uh, so comfortably slow, but you may be able to go a little slower as you progress. So doing this uh, four or five times, as I think you will see, has a wonderful balancing effect on the body. The last one I want to share with you today is a little more, um, it uh, can be a little uncomfortable if you're a little unnatural when you first start. It's not um, a way that we're used to, um, to breathing. It's a, a forced exhalation and we're only exhaling through the, uh, through the nose and, the, and inhaling through the nose. So it's a little awkward. Why do I bother to do this? Because it's very clearing. Uh, to put it in modern terms, it feels like rebooting the computer or turning it off and turning it on again. Um, it's, very, uh, it's, it's very clearing energetically. It's clearing for the mind. Uh, it's, it's quite active, um, so it can give you a little bit of energy too. So um, Kapalabhati, Kapal means cranium or forehead, and Bhati means light, perception, or knowledge. So it brings light or clarity to the front part of our brain. It's also um, known as skull shining breath, and that's how it feels. It feels like it's getting in there and scrubbing out and shining my skull and, and clearing my mind. So um, if it feels awkward at first, I understand, uh, but I encourage you to give it a try and with a little time, it gets more comfortable. So to practice this, our mouth stays closed the whole time. The inhalation, the exhalation happens just through the nostrils. It's a forced, uh, rapid, energetic exhalation. I'll show you once like this. So it's a forced, fast exhalation through the nostrils. The mouth stays closed. And when you do this, your abdomen goes in. Now, a way to get the feeling of this is to cough. If you cough, you'll feel your abdomen goes in. You don't even have to think about it. It just happens naturally when we cough, because when we cough, we're trying to expel something. <coughs> so just cough a couple times, and, that'll, and you'll notice that your abdomen goes in. <coughs> so we're recreating this, but without coughing. So the exhale is through your nostrils. It's fast and sharp, just like when you cough. And just like when you cough, your abdomen's going to go in. And the inhalation is relaxed. So we just allow our breath to come back naturally, but the exhalation is forced and fast. When we do it a few times, it looks like this. And as you get more comfortable with it, it could be done faster, more like this. So if you like numbers, numerology, you could do this 33 times. That's a good number to start. As you build up, you could do it 55, 77, 99. And you can just count as you're doing it with each exhalation. You'll know how many you've done. One, two, three, just like that. So it takes a little practice to get comfortable with it, but I encourage you to do it. At least I have found that it's very uh, clearing, clears out the mind, clears your energy helps you to focus and gives you a little energy. Also, uh, it's very clearing for the lungs and stimulates the uh, digestive organs. A lot of good benefits from it. There are a long list of contraindications, which I wrote down because it's too many uh, to remember, but they are worth mentioning. So obviously, if you just had abdominal surgery, not a good idea. Your abdomen's trying to heal. <laughs> that action is going to be too much on your abdomen. So don't do it if you're recovering from abdominal surgery. Uh, for women, if you're pregnant or menstruating, please don't do it. Um, high or low blood pressure, don't do it. Heart disease, no. Gastric ulcer, no. All of these things, please do not do this. Hernia, epilepsy, vertigo, 
migraines, nosebleeds, a detached retina, glaucoma, or any history of a stroke. Any of those things, please don't do this. Some of the more relaxing breaths would be good, but this is a very powerful active breath. So those are um, contraindications, times when it should, conditions where it should not be done. Also, if you feel dizzy when you're doing this, stop. But short of all that, I encourage you, if you don't have any of those contraindications, I encourage you to practice it and see if you find benefit from it. So remember, these can be done at the beginning of your day, the middle of the day, the end of the day. Anytime you want to clear and balance your energy, these pranayama breathing exercises are fantastic. Um, absolutely before meditation, but also anytime you want to clear and balance your energy. So I encourage you to practice them and see what feels of benefit to you. Thank you.